Becoming rich makes you more of what you already are. If you are a jerk, you will become more of a jerk. And so you mentioned you had some people that you knew that were like this or became that way? Yeah. You said something about some TikTokers? Yeah, I had like a, I was, I'm subscribed to these couple YouTubers. And at the beginning, they were super humble, super, you know, like they had nothing. They started from zero. And now that they're like millionaires, billionaires, whatever they are, they're completely different. Like they switched. So they basically, their their egos exploded. They see themselves as more important than they really are. Entitled. Entitled. Kind of like, was it Nancy Pelosi's husband? He got pulled over a couple months ago for drunk, drunk driving. This is the Speaker of the House, the third most powerful person in the world. <clears throat> so her, her husband gets pulled over. Gets a DUI. I think he crashed. No, I actually wrecked. He he crashed into somebody because he was hammered. And I think there was somebody else in the car. I think there might have been a woman in the car who was not Nancy. Mrs. Pelosi. I don't. Yeah. It's, and and then I, he handed the police officer some kind of card or club or organization of police officers that he was like a part of, assuming that they were gonna just you know, hey, no problem, water under the bridge. Which they kind of didn't charge him at first. And then everybody was uproaring, complaining that, oh, because he's his wife is Speaker of the House, they just gave him a pass. And then so finally, he ended up get a, getting arrested and charged, and now I guess he pled guilty, and he's going to serve like five, five days. But just the <laughs> attitude of him turning the, you know, here, because of who I am, I'm an important person. You know, I shouldn't have to deal with this. This is something that the unwashed masses... Mm. Should be dealing with. Mm -hmm. Who does he think he is? Yeah. You know, it's like Jocko says, be humble or you will be humbled. And so you see that a lot. A lot of people, like even celebrities, they're kind of humble when they start and then they just become assholes. If they're already an asshole, then they kind of become a bigger asshole. How do you get there, though? Like, what makes you change? Well, it's not... It, what happens is the ego is always in check and they don't have a high opinion of themselves. And so they're kind of humble and they, they haven't succeeded. So they really, they, they have dreams, but they haven't experienced the reality of those dreams. And then when they experience it, then their ego takes credit for, it. you know, the part of you that says, I am what I do. I am what I have. I am my reputation. I'm my nice sports car, my nice, Lamborghini SUV or my yacht or whatever it happens to be, then so you identify with all of the stuff, all those things. And you think because you have those things that you're better than people that don't have those things. But I you're think, not. Yeah, go ahead. But you're not. Mm -hmm. And they're rude to, you know, to waiters and waitresses and bartenders or the help or, or people, especially in the service industry, you see that. Right. And I think that that's like a really good way to put it. Um, you ever been on dates where the guy's like a dick to the waiter or the waitress or whatever? Yeah, I have. Um, I mean, and how does that make you feel about him? Horrible because I've had my most humbling job was my days at Hooters. Um, Hooters makes you happy. Hooters makes you happy. And uh, that's definitely where I learned the value for a dollar. And where I learned lots of life lessons, um, how to first be respected and how to truly respect another human being. Um, I got the job for fun and as kind of a revenge on an ex-boyfriend um, at the time. But then it so it was your way to make him jealous? It was kind of like, like a fuck you. Yeah, like... Now, Was he controlling or something? Yeah. Um, jealous and insecure so about other men? So many levels, yeah. And, and so you go work and, at Hooters where you're going to get a ton of attention from men? Yeah, and he also cheated on me with, like, it was horrible. Damn. He had, like, a relationship with one of my friends for, like, seven months behind my back. And then I found out, and I was like, that was the camel. That's that ratchet. <laughs> yeah. I mean, hey. It's like trailer park South Florida stuff. here. 
Yeah. No, trailer park stuff is that car you told me that the girl had to jump out of the car in mid year. Oh, oh, yeah. That's that, that, that was another one. <laughs> yeah. But I mean That's funny. when when guys are like just rude, like in public, that shows you like who they are. Not and who they're going to be later on in a relationship to you and how they're gonna treat you. So that's like red flag. And I can't stand being disrespected. I can't stand another man disrespecting a woman or another man. I just, I can't stand disrespect. I don't know if that's something that people need to learn. Like if it's something innate or if it's in the environmental factors that they're brought up with. But respect is like a huge thing. You need to be able to to communicate with one another you need to have that respect you need to have trust but when you're on a date with someone and someone is completely disrespectful to like someone who they think is below them or they think they're entitled to something first of all you don't know where the person who's serving you comes from you don't know where the class that they come from you don't know the type of home they come from for all you know this person could be driving a nicer car than you could be way wealthier than you doesn't need a job is doing it to make themselves happy to keep themselves busy so don't ever judge a book by its cover and if you're going to be disrespectful shame on you and I don't even want to spend time like finishing that conversation and being a mom and like having to like explain that shit it's not worth my time that somebody else should have taught you that lesson so I had a, a friend, he worked for a big tech firm a couple of decades ago and had t- a ton of stock options. And at the time, this tech firm merged with another company, and at the time it was the largest corporate merger in the world. And so because they were basically the largest company in the world at that point in becoming that, and they'd had all this success in, in the technology field, they were pioneers. It went to their head, the heads, the CEOs, the people in, in upper management. And so there would be these other companies that wouldn't want to be bought or whatever, and they weren't really a good fit. But because they had so many billions of dollars at their disposal, they would go and buy these companies for nothing more than to just say, hey, we can do a business deal before lunch. And plus that, you know, jerk off said that, you know, he would never sell to us. And so they would just basically pay him enough to get him to agree to it so they could go and laugh about it over golf. Mm-hmm. And they were wasting tens of millions and hundred, eventually hundreds of millions of dollars. And my friend was, you know, because of the merger, it diluted his shares to a certain amount. And so that enabled him to liquidate all of his shares, take his golden parachute and go... So he sold all of these shares within like $2 of the all-time high of this company because he saw the writing in the wall. These guys were no longer running this giant company on sound business principles. Their egos were involved. And so they were just buying and selling companies and doing deals, sometimes just for the hell of it, or they didn't like somebody. And they, even though they didn't need the technology, a rival or some other company wanted to buy it and could have used it, and they would just buy it and close the company down and maybe keep some of the employees or whatever. You know, and so they're not doing things based on sound business principles. And so a lot of the people that had shares and ownership, they would, you know, they had lots of stock options. They would take all the equity out of their house and buy more. And even when it was going down, they're like, buy more, keep going. And, and he saw the writing in the wall. He's like, eventually these guys are going to, you know, run the company into the ground. And eventually they did. And, you know, the company was worth a fraction of it. But, he had gotten out just because he saw how the people were, they just all became a bunch of egomaniacs. He said some of them, we were talking about this the other day at lunch, were, especially some of the high-level executives, were just criminals, basically. They had a criminal mentality, or literally white-collar criminals and pirates and kind of bandits. And you just saw that recently with, um, it was one of the big, uh, was it Three Arrows Capital, I think it was, Chunky? I, I read a, it was one of the ones that was in the crypto space, and they were like the whiz kids, and these guys started with nothing, and two really smart dudes, and you know they had like a hundred and fifty million dollar yacht that they were building, and they kind of become billionaires, and 
and then it it turns out that they were just basically ripping people off and now they're hiding from everybody because all the creditors are, are after them and it, it just caused a cascading effect of a bunch of other companies that had lent them their crypto and they were you know taking the crypto and using it as collateral to get more loans and invest in their things and then when the money supply started contracting then the and the crypto market started going down they end up going bankrupt sounds like the wolf of wall street it's kind of something like that yeah but it's like these you know they're humble just start now and then they do well they make a bunch of money and then you know the success goes to the their heads and they think they're infallible and they've done well for like 10 or 12 years and then they get into this, you know, the, which is, you know, the crypto industry, and it's all completely open. And they become one of the biggest players in the block, and they come crashing down. Pride cometh before the fall. And it's like what Jocko says, be humble or you will be humbled. <laughs>